Hi, this is Steve from Conductive Labs, and in this video we're going to talk about the activity screen on the MRCC. So you may want to look up here, and maybe over there a little bit, but mostly up here. Okay, so um, when you first turn on the MRCC, the activity screen shows up. Uh, in the title bar it says activity, and then on the right side it says uh, U1, which is user1. That's telling me the preset that it loaded. The rest of this is a giant grid that shows us the inputs and the outputs. It's sort of a, the, the routing matrix of the MRCC. So at a glance, you could tell, do you have anything routed and is there any activity going on? So when it's routed, there'll be a square white box around each one of these uh, blue squares. And if there's any activity going on, you'll see uh, it'll be filled in and it'll twinkle a little bit. Also, on the left side, each row is an input. If any data is coming in on an input, you'll see an arrow. So right now, if you look close, you can see on the very close to the bottom there, there's a red arrow and it's kind of pulsing a little bit. That is telling me that the uh, thing plugged into USB host D, it's the bottom of the host, uh, has clock coming in. And that indeed is true. The noodler sends out clock and it is plugged into D. So even though there's no routing, I can quickly see is there activity coming in to the MRCC. And when it's red, it typically means clock. I made it red because when you have too many clocks coming in, actually anything more than one clock coming in could be a real, a real hassle. Um, so I wanted to draw your attention to that with the red, red color. Okay, so um, let's just do some examples and maybe this grid becomes more clear to you. Uh, again, each row is an input. So let's choose input two, because uh, that's where I have the uh, beat step plugged in. And uh, let's choose uh, output 3. So now you can see that the second row is input 2 and the third column is output 3. So if I start playing some stuff you'll see a green arrow appears and that's telling me MIDI activity is coming in on port 2 and it's being routed out uh, to output port 3. Now I could actually choose 10 as well and you can see now that there's it's showing me the routing and then it shows you the activity. Um, I could also route it out to the noodler, for instance. So I would go to D as my output, and now you'll see in that in the row uh, in the columns. There's four columns there. Those are all the they're grouped together. Um, so you could see where the um, host ports are. Again, if I play some notes, you'll see them going into the to that column as well. And if I wanted to send it to the PC, I could do that and choose, let's say virtual cable 10. You'll have to watch another video to, to see how that works. But now you can see the in the very last column, which is my PC column, it's also routed and now being sent to the PC. So I can go ahead and clear these. Um, there you go. Um, and now there's nothing routed. Um, now, nano keys plugged into A. So let's choose A. And I'll just go boop. And now you can see that I'm sending data to uh, Channels 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Not channels, but ports. Um, let me turn those off. Um, well, let's, let's, do, let's do some fun stuff. Let's, turn, let's, let's uh, map some stuff to uh, 1, 2, and 3. Coming in on 2. Coming in on A, we'll do uh, 5, 6, 7. Uh, coming in from the noodler, we'll choose, uh, let's say, 9, 10, and 11. And now you can see these groups of 3. I do that. I do that or I turn on the noodler, and you can see that we can route uh, data independently, three different independent paths for these controllers and synthesizers. Um, so that's really useful. Also, uh, we could send it simultaneously to the same set of, uh, oops, there you go. So now the noodler is sending out to five, six, and seven, but so is the key step. So I can merge the MIDI data from the noodler and the, um, I'm sorry, the nano key, not the key step, uh, into the same synthesizers. So the MRCC does merging without you having to be aware of it. The older MIDI routers um, actually required you to set up some weird stuff to do merging and you were limited. MRCC is unlimited merging. Of course, if you send too many notes to a synthesizer, like if you've got a bunch of arpeggiators going or, or sequencers, it could um, overload the the target device or the synthesizer, but uh, but and f as far as the MRCC is concerned, you merge implicitly. There's nothing you have to do special to merge. It just happens. 
Okay, um, what else? Um, ba, ba, ba. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's, uh, un let's undo these. Um, and um, I wanted to show you something special about the um, uh, USB uh, ports. Because remember we talked about virtual wires in, in a couple videos ago. So how do you see that? Like if I go to A1 and I do 1 and then I go to A2, virtual wire 2, and route it to 5 and virtual wire 3, route it to 8 and virtual wire 4 and route it to 12, it looks like these are all routed to the same destination and they really aren't. It's again a global view. So if you press the down button once, you will see it tells you up on the top that this is activity for A4. So it tells you, shows you all four of the ports on A. So you know that they're going out um, virtual wire one, two, three, and four. Hope that makes sense to you. If you watch the virtual wire cable, it should totally make sense. If you continue um, pressing the down button, which you have to do to get back to the main page, you'll get one for B, C, and D, as well as one for PC. So you can see how all those are virtual, all virtual cables are routed. And then you hit the button again, you're back to your main activity screen. And that uh, pretty much covers it for the activity screen. So thanks for watching. Hope this was informative. <laughs> all right, thanks.